Hi, everybody. Welcome to Therapeutic Wisdom from the Akash. Happy Saturday. How's everybody out there in Facebook doing today? I hope that those of you in the United States had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and that you're continuing to enjoy time to rest and relax and be with your families. I welcome you here. If this is your, your first time here, welcome to Awoken TV. You can connect with Awoken TV via www.awoken.tv or through the App Store. And there you're going to find films, courses, um, conscious filmmakers, and light workers who are here to assist you on your spiritual and metaphysical journey. We like to call Awoken a spiritual and metaphysical Netflix. So um, please say hello if you're hopping on and let me know if this is your first time here. I love to welcome new watchers and I also like to interact with the audience. So I'm going to take a moment to share this out and I encourage you to do so as well, especially for somebody that you feel could really benefit from um, the discussion around binge eating because that's what we're going to be discussing today. Okay. And uh, if you guys are interacting on Emerge Healing and Wellness or the Akashic Academy, then you're going, I'm not going to see your comments live. And I would encourage you to jump over to Awoken TV because when you post there in the comments, I'm going to be able to see them live and interact with you live and answer your questions. But I won't be able to answer your questions or connect with you live if you're on a different page, okay? You can always tag me in comments, and of course, I would be happy to um, answer those after the live, okay? So if you guys wanna chat with me live here, just jump onto Awoken TV. All right, so I'm just doing one more share out and then we can get started. My name is Laura Mazada, and I am the Akashic Therapist, which means that, hi Jenny, good to see you, honey which means that I have been a therapist for almost 20 years and I also assist light workers and healthcare professionals with getting their message heard and being uh, more confident and clear in their messaging and their ability to help others. So I am combining these two modalities here because I feel it's the most efficient and effective form of healing and I like to bring forward wisdom from the Akashic Records on mental health issues that present on a regular basis in the human field, okay? So how many of you have experienced binge eating? And honestly, if you can't raise your hands in the comments, then you might want to reevaluate because the vast majority of us have engaged in binge eating, especially around holiday time. This is the time when it really comes up a lot. So um, it is something that's very common. And... Um, I want you to, to not feel shameful about it, right? And I don't want you to feel like this is not something that I can raise my hand about because um, that means I'm doing something wrong. And that's just not the case. It's a very, um, that's actually a very common issue in our society. And it's something that really has very clear belief systems and feelings underneath it that we can rectify, okay? So binge eating, what does it really mean in general? I'm gonna give you some basic clinical definitions here at the beginning. And then we're going to shift more from those clinical definitions into an understanding about what does this mean underneath and how can I shift out of this pattern, okay? And this could be something that you're dealing with or that a loved one is, loved one is dealing with. So if you want to take notes, feel free to do so so that you can assist somebody in your life or yourself to return back to when you feel like you're in that moment and you get stuck and you don't feel like you're in control, okay? So what is binge eating? Binge eating is... It can be characterized by a few different things, honestly, and you can let me know if you've had different experiences with it, because like anything, binge eating exists on a spectrum, okay? So um, primarily, binge eating is, it's considered binge eating if you've eaten too quickly. And when we say too quickly, you say, okay, well, what is the average, all right? So it's really, it's relative to when you were at a very, at your best, you know, feeling at your best. But you can also say um, it's a comparison to the general lifestyle of the people around you. But I don't like to really rely on that one because a lot of us learn some of our eating behaviors from our upbringing. And if everybody in our upbringing has really unhealthy eating behaviors, thank you for being that vulnerable and honest, Jenny. I appreciate it. Um, you know, if, if they have unhealthy eating behaviors, then we're comparing ourselves to something that's already dysfunctional, right? 
So I think it's better to identify when have I felt the best in my skin, the most energetic, the most well-fueled, the most satisfied, satiated, happy, comfortable. Okay. And those are the times that you can compare for yourself because then you're also empowering yourself by comparing yourself to a previous version of you when you have been doing well. So you can compare your pace of eating to that. Okay. So it's eating too fast. It's eating too much. Okay. Relative to, you can say the average Joe. One of the terms that used to be a real buzzword in the eating disorder community, I've specialized in eating disorders for a couple of decades. And um, one of the buzzwords is BMI, body mass index. And they don't really use that anymore. In fact, they're trying to get away from it because what they found is if you look at somebody's BMI and then decide whether or not they have something, an issue that they have to attend to with their eating, you know, it's really not an accurate reflection okay, of what's going on. And so it's more important to really come closer to this intuitive eating, right, where you're listening to your energy, you're listening and seeing how does my body respond? How do I respond when I eat certain foods or when I eat in a certain way? Okay, that's a much more valuable indicator of where you're at your healthiest than a number or a statistic, okay? So let's just keep that in mind, and especially when we're talking about weight as well because a lot of people can get very fixated on weight and feel like that's the primary indicator, where that is not the case at all. And I've seen this time and time and time again with my clients. Um, there, there's truly a sweet spot for everybody, for everybody's physical body. There's truly a sweet spot for where do I need to be in terms of a balance and a harmony with my physical body and my emotional body and my cognition, um, where I feel at my best, where they all kind of click together. And there is a sweet spot for every single person, I promise you. And you know what it requires? Patience. Most of it requires patience because we have to give ourselves time to allow us to learn about our physical bodies, about our emotions and how we respond to certain foods or certain experiences in our environments or stress or dis-ease of any kind. Okay. So when we start to learn those patterns, we can listen to our bodies and we can communicate with them in a way that allows ourselves to meet its needs. Okay. All right. And then the last thing, so there's eating too much, eating too fast. And the last thing is feeling out of control. Anytime that you're eating and you're feeling really out of control, it can be a binge. Okay. Because you're eating in a, like a desperate or frenetic way. Your intention is really there to just kind of fill the void and say, oh, oh, oh right? So it's that desperate frenetic feeling behind it. So those are the three typical characterizations. And this doesn't mean, oh, I've binged once in my life. And so, you know, I have an issue. That's not the case. And I'm certainly not here to diagnose anyone, particularly on Facebook. <laughs> However, I am sharing information that can be helpful for you. So, um, so one of the things is most people binge on foods that are lacking in nutritional value for the most part. There are people who binge on really any foods um, and sometimes healthier foods because they can't consciously allow themselves to eat outside of that. But primarily we're looking at peanut butter as one of the biggest binge foods, salty foods like potato chips, any kind of sweets, um, something that's heavy in carbs. Okay, so those are pretty typical. And one of the best ways that we can tackle this it's really behavioral, okay? And the first step that we typically go to when we're treating binge eating is go to a structure, okay? Go to structured eating. And there's two main rules that apply here and a third loose one that you can follow if you choose. So the three main or the two main rules are make sure you eat within one hour of waking and never go over two to three hours without eating, okay? So this means small snacks throughout the day or three meals and two snacks, but you eat within an hour of waking up and then every two to three hours, you make sure you have something in your body. It's usually recommended that you combine when you're eating, anytime you're eating, that you combine a protein and a carb and a fat. Now this doesn't necessarily have to apply with snacks, but it definitely has to apply with meals because that what's, that, that's what assists your metabolism with running the most smoothly and allowing your body to work more efficiently when processing foods, okay? So those are some basics and those are some basic practical suggestions to start if you've developed a pattern of binge eating. Remember I said, 
if this has happened once in your life, it's not necessarily something you have to put a lot of focus on. But if it's something that's become a pattern or it's something that's re resulted in you not functioning as well as you'd like, you being very preoccupied with this issue, then certainly it's something to give some attention to, okay? All right, so there's two different types of binge eating that I wanna to talk to you about today. And this is information that actually um, became available to me when I was in the space of the, the Akashic Records helping a client. So some of this is clinical information and some of it is information from our subconscious minds, from the spirit, from the Akash. Okay, so two different kinds of, of binge eating. One is passive binge eating, and that's the more common one. And there's also active binge eating. So I'd like you to just get an idea of which one do I feel I spend most of my time in, okay, if you have a pattern of binge eating. Because when you identify that, and there is some crossover, okay, so you may find that you don't just fit into one category, which is of course fine because everything exists on a spectrum when we're talking about this kind of thing. But it's, it's good for you to take notes and identify which of these areas do I feel um, like I resonate more with because I'm going to give you some journal questions to, to use going forward and to also assist you with bringing forward more ideas and tools and techniques to help you heal. And the other piece is I'm also going to assist you with understanding what is the driver behind each of these types of binge eating, okay? So one of them is... Passive. Okay, so passive binge eating. This is the most common form of binge eating. So passive binge eating is really when you find yourself in a situation where you end up binge eating, right? Like you didn't have an intention. It was kind of subconscious, right? Like automatic just came up in your life. And you were like, oh, here I am again, right? Stuck in this spiral, stuck in this pattern. Okay. So with passive binge eating, <clears throat> you end up getting to this because you either feel lonely, guilty, ashamed, or sad. You're seeking comfort, or you're trying to fill up some kind of space or emptiness within you. So passive binge eating is actually it ends up being compulsive because you're feeling this this negative feeling, you're feeling uncomfortable. And you want to ease that. And that doesn't mean that you're consciously choosing to use binge eating to, to soothe yourself, but that's what's happening. That's the mechanism that's occurring. So when these emotions come up, you're basically compensating. You're trying to fill yourself, fill that emptiness, fill that void with food, okay? And you're seeking comfort. And when we have a compulsive behavior, it's used to intentionally take away the fear or take away the negativity, negativity on a temporary basis, okay? So when you're in this situation, passive binge eating, you wanna ask yourself two questions. One of the questions is, where else can I seek comfort or fill myself with love and compassion? Where am I in need of giving more to myself? You know, because for those of you who don't know my story, I got sepsis about four years ago and I thought I was taking really good care of myself. I really did. I was very balanced. I was very committed to, take, to, to investing in self-care. But then I got sick and I realized that my energy, my energy body needs a lot more than I realized. And I wasn't paying attention to some of those cues because I thought, well, I've checked all the things off the list, right? Like I've, I've done all the self-care. <laughs> what I didn't understand is the deep level of relaxation and love that I needed to offer myself that I wasn't aware of. And that's what's often, that's what's true when we have symptoms come up, like binge eating, right? We may be giving to ourselves, but we need more and that's okay. I went through a period of judging myself because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so needy, <laughs> Right? And then I was like, wow, you know what? This is a gift that I that, that this is what my body needs and this is what my energy needs and this is what my emotions need. It's a gift because it really allows me to, to take care of myself and experience a much greater level of ease and joy than I really ever thought possible and that I wouldn't have really looked into or sought out on my own. So really allow this to allow yourself to see this as, a, as an opportunity, okay? 
All right, so that's the first question is, where else can I seek comfort or fill myself with love and compassion? And the second question for passive binge eating is how or where can I be more courageous? Can I step outside of my comfort zone and listen to my intuition? Because very often with passive binge eating, what we see is that person that's more likely to hide. That person that's more likely to be sheepish or kind of shut their mouth or stifle themselves in some way. And this can be because of people pleasing. It can be because of societal expectations, expectations in a family, expectations you've created for yourself that may have come from your family, may have come from past lives or ancestors or generations back. Okay. So you can even add another question there and say, is this even mine to carry? Right? Like, am I carrying this, this stifling, hiding energy from somebody in my ancestry or somebody in a past life or, you know, a past life that I've lived, right? And you can explore that. So, you know, when you're hiding in some way, it's what is underneath that is always anger. And even if you're not feeling consciously that you're feeling angry, I would encourage you to explore that a little bit more deeply because you could be angry at yourself. You could be angry at generations back. You could be angry at a past life of yours that you don't even know about, that you've carried forward energetically that hasn't been cleared. Because we have been shown in the research over and over again that trauma is passed down through at least three generations. Okay? So it's important for us to realize that that energetic blueprint follows us. And sometimes what's stored in that is not just memories. It's not just data and facts and information. It's also feelings. Okay. So we can bring that forward. So asking is this mind to carry as well. Okay. But when we have unprocessed anger or anger that we're dismissing or anger that we haven't attended to or allowed ourselves to feel and that we've stifled, we end up feeling shame and anxiety and depression and guilt. So when you bring yourself up to anger and you allow yourself to identify that, although it might be uncomfortable, it's also fleeting. And there's ways that you can, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, there's ways that you can manage that anger going forward so that it doesn't remain stuck and turn into something more dense like shame or guilt or anxiety or depression. And that's actually a sign that you're moving forward and you're healing. Okay. And forgiveness is a big piece here too, guys. Like if you're feeling anger at someone or at yourself or at a situation or a previous lifetime, it's really important to engage in some very consistent forgiveness practices like Ho'oponopono prayer or a compassionate context circle. I did these in my forgiveness live, I think a couple of weeks ago, if you guys want to check that out, it's also on my YouTube channel. If you want the link to it, please feel free to comment and I'm happy to paste the link for you. So it's an easy click. Or you can write a letter to the person, to yourself, to the situation, very compassionately read it out loud, and then you can burn to release. We have a full moon coming up. I believe it's on Sunday night. It could be Monday, though, but I think it's Sunday night we have a full moon coming up. And it's a lunar eclipse as well, and it's in Gemini. So it's a very, um, it's a very powerful, emotional full moon. So this is a really good opportunity for you to do some of this releasing. Okay, so the timing is great for us to be doing this live. All right. Let me just take a quick sip here. Let me know if you guys have questions. Remembering that if you're live on another page, I'm not necessarily going to see the live comments um, unless you're here on Awoken TV, okay? All righty. So <clears throat> the second way, oh, and let me just go back for one second before we go into talking about active binge eating. There's just a couple other notes I wanted to share with you. So one, we talked about this structure around eating, right? I do not encourage my clients to get my fitness pal or apps where they count calories. That's not healthy and it's not good for your healing and recovery. What is healthy is if you want to log what you're eating, go ahead and do that. There's apps out there that allow you to do that without counting calories, okay? Because then you're just going to get preoccupied and fixated on the calories and then you're going to hate yourself because you're going to look at the numbers and you're going to judge exactly what comes up in front of your face, okay? So that's not productive. So what's more productive, if you want, you can log what you eat, but you wanna log it in terms of, you know, specific quantities. 
So you can say like, I had a chicken breast about the size of my hand. And then I had two cups of salad. And then I had a cup of rice and I put a, like a half a pat of butter on it with some salt and pepper, like being really specific about your measurements and what you are taking in and the time and what was going on around then. Who is the perp who were the people that were around? Where were you? What time of day was it? What were the activities that were going on that day? How was your mood? Okay, so identifying some factors, some cofactors that can exist around the same time can assist you with developing themes and understanding your patterns better. Okay, so going to a structure like that, in addition to a couple of the eating rules that I shared with you earlier, and I don't like the word rules, but it's the best way that I can think of to communicate it to you. Um, it can be helpful because when you have structure in any form, even if your structure wants to be doing yoga or taking a shower and brushing your teeth or, you know, you create a different structure, that's okay. Anytime that we introduce structure, we introduce safety and security for ourselves. Okay, so we want to feel safe. We want to feel secure. So when we offer ourselves structure, that's very loving because it gives us a place to rest. I've used food when I have two situations, says Jenny. I either cannot control something happening medically to a member of my family, or I am so busy working in high catering season that I deny myself the time to eat so I get work done. I will absolutely hit that peanut butter or ice cream as my two biggest caving foods. 100%. So the first, the first answer there is get rid of the peanut butter and get rid of the ice cream. Don't make them accessible. Okay, so that's a really big piece to, to pay attention to is, do you love yourself enough to not have them in the house? Do the people who share your home with you love you enough to not have them in the house and to sacrifice that delicacy or that luxury for your health and betterment? Okay, so that's one question. And thank you for being so honest and open here, Jenny. I really appreciate it. I really enjoy communicating with people watching. So, um, and then controlling something happening. So that's the next part with active binge eating. We're gonna get to that in just a second. And if I don't address that answer um, in what I'm talking about next, please let me know. And I'm happy to address your individual stuff as well, okay? All right, so find structure, get pissed because that makes you start to, to raise your vibration. And then you have those two journal questions, potentially three. I add a third, added a third one in there. Is this mine to carry? Okay. So that's passive binge eating. Then we move on to active binge eating. Okay. And this is when you intentionally binge or intentionally go out and purchase food to binge either or because you're really, your mentality is fuck it. Why not? I'm already screwed, right? And this could be, I'm already screwed in my life because my mom's sick or my dad's sick or somebody in my family's sick, or I'm already screwed because I already fucked up once today with my eating or once this week or six times this week. So I might as well just keep going, right? Which is really a form of, I give up on myself. I mean, when you look at it that way, do you really want to give up on yourself? Do you really choose to give up on yourself? If you're watching this video, I know your answer is no. Even if consciously you might not know that or think that. Okay, you have a certain amount of love for yourself or you wouldn't even be here. Okay. All right. So this is active binge eating. You're intentionally doing it and making that choice or purchasing that food because pff, screw it. Already screwed. Already screwed. Okay. So this comes from choice and control. Okay. This is you're propelled into action by anger, rage, spite, or overwhelm. Okay. So can you see the difference between the passive binge eating and the active binge eating? So this active binge eating is you are propelled into action by anger, rage, spite, or overwhelm. Okay. And so the binging is not soothing and comforting like it was in passive binge eating. It's actually empowering. It's really empowering because it makes you feel like I have control here. I have a choice. There's something in my life that I can control. Right? I have the ability to provide something to myself or to my family with food. And this can also present as cooking in, in immense, immense amounts for other people too. Not because you intend for them to 
for them to binge, but because you want to, to fill the void for everybody involved. Okay. So the binging brings you to empowerment. So very similarly to our previous questions that we talked about in passive binge eating, there's also a couple journal questions for active binge eating. Okay. So one of them is where else can I establish or act with control in my life, no matter how minor this can be, well, you know what? I'm going to go wash my hands because I can wash my hands and I get to choose whatever soap I want. And I get to put lotion on if I want to afterwards. And I get to dry my hands or not dry my hands. I know that sounds silly, but, and it's just an example. Okay. But it's true that no matter how minor you want to, even if you sit down and made a list in your journal of all of the things that you can control, all of the things in your life you can control. And then choosing one of those areas and allowing that to be a focal point for you during that period of time, because you know what your tendencies are when it comes to choosing in a situation of anger, rage, spite, or overwhelm, okay? The second question, and there's gonna be three questions here. The second question is, how do I release anger and forgive myself and others? So we started to talk about this a little bit. This is the crossover between passive and active binge eating right? But, you know, if you've watched my anger live, because I did a, a, a live on ang managing anger for Awoken TV as well. Again, that's on my YouTube channel. If you want the link, let me know and I'll put it down there for an easy click. But <clears throat> my favorite one is lining up empty aluminum cans and smashing them with your hand, with your foot, with a bat. Please be careful. But it's great because it's a multi-sensory experience. And anytime you can combine your senses when you're releasing emotions, the more effective it's going to be, okay? And, and the more impact it's going to have as well, okay? So, so releasing anger that way, you can also do what we talked about earlier with forgiveness practice, like writing a letter and burning it. But I typically find that, that including something physical can be very, very helpful because anger is a very physical emotion. Rage certainly is. Spite can be. And overwhelm certainly is a very physical emotion. We feel either they're in our head spinning or we feel nauseous or we feel lightheaded or shaky or sweaty, right? So any kind of physical practice could be helpful. So you can also go back to that video and get more ideas. All right, and then the third question with active binge eating is, how else can I empower myself? Because really that's what you're looking for. You're looking for control, you're looking for empowerment. And why are you looking for control? Because you're looking for empowerment. So where can you always access power? Anybody have the answer to that one? Because what this is about, guys, is active binge eating is about rebellion. Whether it's rebellion against yourself, rebellion against the situation because you feel helpless, Rebellions, rebellion against a certain person, you're, you're trying to buck the system, pave your own path. So this is where you get the opportunity to be a badass in one area of your life. Okay. Hey, Stephanie, thanks for being here. You get to be a badass in one area of your life. You get to choose to be empowered in that moment. What makes you feel empowered? You want to go stand outside and scream something to the Oh, meditation, meditation. <laughs> I love you, Jenny. So yes, I mean, meditation is a beautiful way to access power, right? We always have access to infinite flows of abundance and power. And that's one of the things with binge eating as well, is there is this underlying belief around there isn't enough, or, or there's some kind of scarcity mindset around, I'm not going to have enough comfort, or I'm not going to have enough answers, or I'm not going to have enough care, or I'm not going to have enough love, or I'm not going to have enough food, right? And so it's when we can, when we, we're looking to be empowered and we can connect to our high, higher power, whatever you want to call that, God, spirit, source, the universe, your higher self, connecting to that higher power is going to remind you how we have an ever-flowing flow of abundance at all times, abundance of love, wealth, health, food, you name it, energy, ease. Okay, so reconnecting 
to that is going to remind you how empowered you are. Asking God for a message. Trusting God. You know, we talked about creating structure with the passive binge eating, right? Relying on any kind of structure <clears throat> is going to help you feel safe. What else makes you feel safe? Relying on God, relying on the universe, surrendering to the universe. I have a card deck that I really like. I don't have it around here right now. It's by Judith Orloff, and it's called The Power of Surrender. It's a great card deck. And it doesn't have a book that comes with it. It just has a few sentences on each one, which I really appreciate because it allows my intuition to really fill in the rest and my Akashic records and my higher self. And it allows me to identify on a daily basis when I play, pull those cards, what am I meant to surrender today? Am I meant to surrender? Um, I can't think of the word. Um, like aesthetics, right? Like what I look like on the outside. Am I willing to surrender fear? Am I willing to surrender intimacy, um, trying to control intimacy? Am I willing to surrender worry? Whatever it happens to be that's coming up into your field, but really tuning in on a consistent basis with where do I need to surrender? Because a lot of times I see this all the time. I can't even tell you. I see this all the time with binge eating. It very often comes up with people who, and this, this comes along with the passive binge eating, <clears throat> people who are holding it together so much in their lives, especially people who have OCD tendencies. I see binge eating come, come up a lot because you are holding things together so tightly the vast majority of the time that you need the binge because you need a form of freedom. You need a release. You need some relief from holding things together all the time. And that's that's a way where you then say, fuck it, fuck it. I just, I deserve this because I am just kicking ass for myself and everybody else in this world and I need a freaking break. Great, you do deserve a celebration. Did you notice there's a free celebration challenge coming up next week? You guys can sign up for it in the link that I placed in the description. I want you to celebrate yourselves in a different way. I want you to empower yourself in a different way. But what does this tell you? If you need to binge to be able to feel relief, release, freedom, ah, breathing room. It means you need release. It means you need breathing room, which means that one of the ways in that situation that you can cut back on binge eating has nothing to do with binge eating at all. What it has to do with is you chilling out a little bit, right? Releasing some of your control in other areas of your life. Letting go, like um, Jenny said, all of this busyness, right? Busyness is something we all get very addicted to. It makes us feel important. It makes us feel valued. It makes us feel productive. And a lot of times productivity is aligned with success. And then we feel like we're successful humans. But these are all Band-Aid effects. So I encourage you to assess your level of busyness. Yes, you have way too much on your plate, Jenny, 100%. And my question is, when do you decide that you are worth more than all of it? That's when you'll get better. When you decide I am more important than anything, because if I'm not here, I can't take, of the, take care of the other people in my family. I can't take care of people when they're sick. I have to take care of me first. And that doesn't mean that you cannot assist other people by accessing resources to help them so that you can also take care of you. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So it's identifying to where can I surrender? Where can I let go a little bit? And then offering that as a gift to yourself, just a teeny bit each and every day. Okay. And you guys too, when you're shifting to this, I'm going to be a badass in one area of your life, pick something you know you're already good at. You know, you don't have to like start from scratch, but pick something you know you're already good at and just spend more time doing it or cultivate that skill so that you feel more confident. Okay. All right, let me just see if there's anything else that I wanted to add. Yeah, I, I just want to say this in a different way because I had put this in my notes and I think this is a helpful way to say it. Um, that, <laughs> you know, that sometimes the binge eating is a sign that you're holding things together way too well, right? If you're living in too much rigidity 
And this rigidity doesn't just have to be in your commitment to other people and in your schedule and in how busy you are, but it can also be rigidity in your mindset, in the rules that you've set for yourself, in the rules that you've set for other people, in the expectations or belief systems that you carry. Okay. And those might be areas that you need to reassess. You know, you need to reassess those areas and shift some of those belief systems. And maybe that's what we'll do next time on my next live is shifting belief systems so that you know how to do that. You know, very often when we have patterned symptoms coming up, what's underneath it is that I'm not good enough. Will I ever be good enough kind of mentality? And that's a belief system. And that's what's great about it is it can shift. You can change thoughts. You can change beliefs. We have tried and true practices that can help us do that. But guess what that requires? You being committed to yourself and to practicing them and to consistently implementing these tools for yourself. Okay. Oh, and the last thing <laughs> that I wrote down here, which I think is really cool. This is just fun for me because I... I love ancestral healing. It's my favorite part of working in the Akashic Records. And, and I really believe very firmly in it. And, and it's, it's resulted in, in a lot of very powerful shifts for me and my own healing. Um, but really being able to look back in your ancestral line to just get curious about how, how has this pattern showed up, right? So this pattern of binge eating or, or let's say um, you could even call it, if, was there anybody else in your family who had difficulty with impulse control? And these could even be people that you didn't know, right? But just people, stories that you've heard, or um, you can even go into your Akashic records and go back it through your ancestral line and see if there were ancestors that you never met um, and that you haven't even heard of that might have information about this, okay? But you may find that it has been a pattern in your family line, which means that it's not yours to carry and that you may be here to clear that pattern for your family line, which is a very, very empowering tool and practice. And you may also find that your family line has held it together so freaking much that your family line really needs somebody to bust out of the mold and say, I'm doing it differently. And by damn, I'm doing it differently for me and for all of you and for all of the people who are the future versions of me or future generations coming forward. Okay. So that's just like, it's almost like creating a timeline and getting an understanding and a context of your family, of your family history, both family that you know, and family that you don't know it might even be multiple, several generations back. And, and those are the ones that you can communicate with in spirit or through energy in the space of the records. Jenny says, I hope others have found this as eye-opening as me. Thank you so much for really outlining our causes. You're so welcome. I hope this is this is productive. And you know, I think that if you find like, mm, I don't really know how to do this, one is we can certainly talk about shifting beliefs during my next live for sure. The other piece is to check in with your motivation. You know, and if you're not motivated, then that's really a um, a sign for you to just start doing some self-love practices. Right. And, and if you're really not motivated, one of the suggestions that I always make that's super simple and easy, even though you might feel a little awkward doing it originally, is to just start oming. Just start chanting om and holding it for long periods of time when you're lying down, because vibrationally, you're feeling that in your body. You're shifting your building blocks. You're shifting the molecules and the atoms that are within us. And they're starting to repattern. OK, and you are using your physical body to create a shift in your energy. Even if you don't even want to stand up out of the bed, there are still things you can do. Okay. So then the question is, how do I work on motivation? Okay. And that's loving yourself enough. And that's when, when you're really having trouble with motivation, you, you're already starting down that depressive road. Okay. And there's a lot of, of course, critical judgment of yourself. You can get judgment detox book by Gabby Bernstein. That's an excellent book wonderful way to start shifting your mindset around yourself and around just the world at large. But just don't feel like you don't have any options because you do. And when you get to that point where you're not motivated and you're heading down the depressive road, you either get somebody else to kick you in the ass so that you can get started, or you do something we, called, we call opposite action. 
which is the only time that I tell people to go against their gut is when they're really depressed and they can't get their butts out of bed and they can't get moving on something. Right. And it's at that point that you can either ask for help or you just do the opposite of what you're feeling because I promise you, your mind and body, you're going to say, stay in bed, eat the cake, who cares? So that's why being really specific about logging where your mood, what your mood is, who's around the environment when you're, when you're eating, it can be helpful to identify themes. Okay. So let me guys, I hope this was helpful for all you guys. Let me know how you're feeling. If you have other questions, you can certainly tag me in the comments and I'm happy to attend to them later. You can join my free Facebook group, Room for Healing. You can also join us. We're having a free Celebrate Challenge next week, which is going to be such a beautiful opportunity to dive into this level of deserving and self-love. And if you're here and you're watching this live or on the replay, I know that there's still a little nugget there within you or with somebody that you love, which is why you're watching this, of having issues with deserving, of not feeling good enough or not feeling motivated to move forward. So join us. Allow yourself to get this consistency with these lives and this challenge to get you going and get your momentum going so that you can get on the path to healing, okay? And then I will see you guys here next Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Awoken TV. Thank you so much for joining me for Therapeutic Wisdom for the Akash. I love you. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you soon. Bye.